There are some special places where the immensity of geological time becomes clear. And this is arguably the most special of those special places. It's Sicker Point on the south coast of the Firth of Forth in Scotland. And it's here where the concept of an unconformity was first discussed and described. What is an unconformity? Well, it's a junction between two groups of rocks that are completely different in character and age. Let's work our way through this one now. The older rocks at this junction are these. They're grey rocks that were deposited deep in an ocean and they've been tilted now so that the originally horizontal layers are standing up on end. And here they meet the younger group of rocks. The younger groups of rocks are red, much sandier, slightly tilted, and the junction between the two couldn't be clearer. And there are fragments of those older rocks up here within the beds of the younger ones. And why is Sicker so special? Because it's here that unconformities were discovered by James Hutton at the end of the 18th century. Now, Hutton was a fantastic scientist. He was the father of modern geology. He did an Einstein on the subject. He solved a problem before anybody else knew there was a problem there. And he came here with a group of friends to show them the immensity of what he'd discovered. And the account they wrote of the visit was electric. And I want to read part of it to you now. We made for a high rocky point or headland, the Sicker. On landing at this point, we found that we actually trode on the primeval rock. It is here a micaceous schistus in beds nearly vertical, highly indurated and stretching from southeast to northwest. The surface of this rock runs with a moderate ascent from the level of low water at which we'd landed to that of high water, where the schistus has a thin covering of red horizontal sandstone laid over it. This sandstone, a few yards further back, rises into a very high perpendicular cliff. Here, therefore, the immediate contact of the two rocks is not only visible, but is curiously dissected and laid open by the action of the waves. The rugged tops of the schistus are seen penetrating into the horizontal beds of sandstone. And the lowest of these last form a breccia containing fragments of schistus, some round and others angular. Dr. Hutton was highly pleased. On those of us who saw these phenomena for the first time, the impression made will not easily be forgotten. We felt ourselves necessarily carried back to the time when the schistus on which we stood was yet at the bottom of the sea, standing upright in vertical beds. And the sandstone was only beginning to be deposited. An epoch even more remote presented itself when the most ancient of these rocks lay at the bottom of the sea and was not yet disturbed. The mind seemed to go giddy looking so far into the abyss of time.